and it's called My Physical Body and Mind Started Shutting Down, Autistic Burnout and the Costs of Coping and Passing. Thank you so much for having me here today. So today I'm presenting in, on behalf of Aspire. It's the Academic Autism Spectrum Partnership in Research and Education. I co-founded Aspire back in 2006 with Dora Raymaker, who at the time was my lead autistic community partner. She has since received her PhD and is actually the PI of the study that I'm about to present. She can't be here today, so really she deserves the credit for leading this work. Um, Aspire is, co is composed of autistic adults, academics, family members, and providers and we use a community-based participatory research approach where autistic adults serve as equal partners throughout all phases of our research project, research process. Projects right now are mostly focused on healthcare and employment, but I'm going to be talking today about a small new area that we're delving into. So in one of our recent studies on skilled employment, Many participants spontaneously brought up the importance of what they called autistic burnout. Um, as we were discussing potential themes with our community partners, we realized that this topic had incredible valence for our community. And um, what we heard time and time again is that this is um, something that autistic adults discuss very often in social media and autistic spaces, but there's been absolutely nothing about it in the literature. So we decided to explore it a bit further. Um, the objectives of this small exploratory study are to characterize the phenomenon of autistic burnout, to identify potential predictors and consequences of autistic burnout, and to understand what strategies autistic adults feel would potentially help prevent or treat autistic burnout. So, um, so this is an exploratory study using our CBPR approach. All of our materials have been co-created with our community partners. Um, for this particular analysis, we're using three data sources. First, we went back and reanalyzed 10 interviews where autistic burnout emerged organically while autistic adults were discussing their experiences with skilled employment. Um, we then went and conducted 10 new in-depth interviews specifically focused on autistic burnout. And since the first study had been specifically focused on skilled employment, we purposefully sa sampled participants who were not in skilled um, positions. We also, based on the recommendations of both our community partners and the participants, went and, and, and analyzed um, publicly available social media posts um, and to about 20 blogs, websites, um, and the Twitter hashtag on autistic burnout. We're conducting a thematic analysis. We're using primarily an inductive approach to characterize autistic burnout, but we're also using a deductive approach to differentiate it from what was already known about professional burnout and depression. Of course, this is an iterative process, and we're right in the middle of it right now. Um, the academic partners, we each have read um, a subset of the transcripts. We've created preliminary codes, and we've modified them based on discussion with our community partners. We're now currently in the process of dual coding them, and of course, we'll work work with the full team to finalize themes. These are all very preliminary results. So first, what is autistic burnout? What's coming out so far is that there appear to be three really major features of autistic burnout. One is what a lot of participants have described as a kind of increase in autistic traits, um, sometimes increase in sensory sensitivities, things that used to be just an annoyance are now intolerable, um, a sense of sensory overload, and then increased frequency of negative consequences such as meltdowns and, and shutdowns. There also appears to be a very substantial substantial loss of skills. These can be coping skills, executive function, communication skills, other cognitive skills, but things that used to be possible now no longer are. And then, very importantly, there's this kind of chronic severe exhaustion, um, which often manifests as a social withdrawal, decreased motivation, not true anhedonia in that there isn't a lack of interest, but an inability to act on special interests. Um, Participants had a lot of ideas of what causes autistic burnout. Um, and there were, again, some very common things that have come out. One is this idea of 
camouflaging and, mas uh, and masking. This pressure to pass in multiple aspects of life over long periods of time uh, feeds into it. And then this kind of long-term cumulative load of expectations outweighing abilities, this kind of chronic energy debt or inability to recover fast enough, just haven't been able to kind of regain spoons before you're asked to use them all up again. And of course, the background of chronic bullying, abuse, and mistreatment. And then autistic burnout in that context often happens when there are major life changes. We hear a lot of it, people having it, you know, a time of adolescence, a time of going into college, at times of increased independence, times where, where there are increased expectations often related to life stages. For example, um, this is a quote from one of our participants. For me, burnout is something that happens over longer periods of time than other disruptive states and of responses to being autistic. The metaphor I use is that long-term camouflaging and masking leaves behind a kind of psychic plaque in the mental and emotional arteries. Like the buildup of physical plaque over time can result in heart attack or stroke, the buildup of the psychic plaque over time can result in burnout. The impacts of autistic burnout appear to be really intense. Um, we hear a lot of just poor outcomes in terms of employment loss, loss of social standing, loneliness, a loss of belonging, and oftentimes a kind of just even sense of who I am starts, starts changing. And then we're talking about mental illness, a lot of co-occurring or subsequent depression, anxiety, and unfortunately a lot of descriptions of self-injury and suicidality. Um, this is from um, uh, social media. Um, so this combination of stress, camouflaging, social isolation, and loss of an important support person, along with the overwhelming confusion of what was wrong with me, why I couldn't really connect with anyone, why people singled me out or played tricks or used me, of what the hell was wrong with me and why I just kept hitting this wall over and over again, was what led me to crash and burn. My physical body and mind started shutting down. I could feel each system in my body closing off as gravity got heavier than it had ever been. I didn't know what to do, did not understand what was happening to me. I had no way to communicate this. It was like a switch had gone off. My verbal ability to convey what was going on in my mind and body was gone. I did not want to die. I never wanted to die. I needed to step out. I needed to remove myself from the environment and take myself elsewhere. I needed to escape. But the only way I knew how to do that was to die. So I tried. We heard a lot of things about how people thought they might prevent burnout or how they themselves kind of got out of an episode of burnout. A lot of it was just reducing demands, um, reduced expectations. Sometimes there was this wanted or unwanted complete social withdrawal, sensory withdrawal or increase uh, in stimming, and then time off or time with special interests. We also heard a lot about the importance of increased supports, both emotional supports and sometimes really concrete instrumental support, both for uh, just basic activities of daily living as well as more complicated instrumental activities of daily living. Of course, people recommended co-occurring conditions, and sometimes, unfortunately, all that really helped was the passage of time. Of course, this is a very preliminary study, and as I said, our final analyses are still to come. Um, our, our sample was predominantly non-Hispanic white participants. We've been trying to increase the racial diversity of our sample, and of course, we may not have captured the entirety of the autism spectrum. Still, I think there's some important lessons even at this early stage. Um, I really do believe that autistic burnout is a distinct phenomenon. Um, and this, again, it's characterized by increased autistic trait sensitivity, significant loss of skills, and chronic um, severe exhaustion. Autistic burnout may be precipitated by acute or subacute stresses, especially related to life changes. Um, in the context of chronic um, camouflaging abuse and the demands outweighing risks. Autistic burnout may mediate the relationship between autism and mental illness, including su suicidality. And I think as we think about mental illness, we really need to be thinking about, is it the same pathway as it is for typical populations, or is this something that we need to be um, potentially thinking about and treating differently. More re research is obviously needed. I'm very happy to partner with anybody who's interested in the topic. Thank you very much, and a special thanks to, um, as a Dora, this is really her, her project, and to our full Aspire team. Oh, thank you. That was a really, really amazing and powerful talk, and thank you so much for keeping tonight to time.